Hi, and welcome to Wrong Way! And today, we're going to take a look at the inside of the most expensive wheel ever made by Inmotion, the V13. The wheel that has a mudguard for the mudguard of the mudguard. We're also going to remove the suspension, which makes this wheel really small and stable. So stay subscribed if you want to see how it rides without suspension. Anyways, let me tell you more about it. Broadway. By the way, if you want to see how to change a tire on the Emotion V13, check out Two Cells One Pack. They make great videos about how to change a tire. If you want to check it out in French, well, check out Mobility Urban. And before we get into checking the inside of the V13, its quality and parts, a big shout out to Inmotion for providing tons of videos how to replace stuff on your wheel. That's really helpful compared to videos on how to void the warranty of your wheel. Bigode. Alright, but back to the V13. First of all, I take off the seat which is not provided in the box. Because why should you not pay for a seat once you paid 4600 euro for a wheel? Oh, the kickstand? Yes, it's also not in a box. You'll have to use the front roll bars, which are quite wibbly wobbly. The seat is not too bad. More on that in the main review. Now I unscrew the four top screws which hold the trolley handle in place to get access to the motherboard area. Those screws, not too bad with hex heads. But the trolley itself, I do like the fact that it flips up by itself and the shape is pretty ergonomic. However, this top piece is a bit radly and even if I tighten it up, just after a couple of moves, it becomes radly again. Now that's not to say that it's bad, I just mean that it could be better and sturdier. Now I'll remove another set of metal screws with threads on the side and the top handle. Now I'll remove four longer metal screws that screw into plastic with a thread for plastic. Not a fan of those, but that's what we get here next to the suspension adjustment knobs. Now we can get access to the motherboard area. And the biggest shock I've had when I was first changing the tire on the V13 is that this top compartment is not sealed. It's not separated from the elements. You can clearly see traces of mud and dust in the back where the water splashes in between the three mud guards. And in this vicinity, you also have the GX16-6 charge ports, a USB-A and USB-C port covered behind a rubber flap, which seals nicely. Now, I'm not an engineer, nor am I an electrician. Here, I just share my thoughts about what I see. What I see is a compartment where I have high voltage phase wires, which lead to the motor, hall sensor cables, and other electronics, which are pretty much exposed to the elements. Now, probably it's not a problem when you're riding, but if the wheel would fall to the side or fall into a puddle, well, stuff could get potentially dangerous. I mean, it's 126 volt, right? So the IP55 rating does work and I was riding it in rain, but once I opened it up, I got more worried than I initially was regarding riding this wheel in the rain. Question is also how much of those water ingress problems uh, in motion covers under their warranty. Now I will remove a further set of plugs which connect electronics on the board to the top cover and display of the wheel as well as buttons. I do like the redundant batteries and the plugs are XT90s, that is nice, but those other plugs don't seem to hold in that nicely. More on that later. The top cover is also covered in dust from the inside, so it is not dust proof, this top cover area, and we can take a closer look at those motorcycle style plugs. There's also a speaker, which we can easily detach. There's quite a bit of parts which are modular on the Emotion V13, which is nice for parts replacement if anything was ever to break. My display looks nice, but I've heard of a case where a display was fogging up from the inside. The nice thing about unplugging the battery connectors is that there is no spark once you reconnect them. So that's clever engineering. Now back to those plugs. Now I will remove the communication wire between the battery and the board on both sides. And those connectors, again, those plugs just seem to be a bit too easy to pull out of the socket. There is a hook which should keep them in place, but it doesn't seem to work all that well. Now during normal riding, I don't think that would be a problem, but if there would be some very strong vibration, maybe they could get loose. The same thing applies to the hole sensor connectors, well, the redundant ones. I just hope it won't become a future problem. 
The phase wires are secured with screws, which is nice, but all in all their placement is too much out there for me. There should be a plastic cover over that just to prevent any sort of salt water or water spraying into this area. There were two screws which were completely threadless on the side, but that might have been from our last tire change. And then I needed to use pliers in order to unscrew an element which holds the suspension piston in place. That's because I broke my original orange part from in motion. Now let's turn around the wheel and look at the sliders and suspension. Those sliders do look heavily used, but this wheel was really in pain in off-road, jumps, etc, etc. We see some substantial wear and tear on those, and you can also adjust the tightness of those sliders, which you could not do on the V11. That is a big pro, however, I'm not sure how long-lasting those sliders will be. I hope for the best, and probably with normal use case it would be a lot better. Now I will remove the valve covers, which are not connected to the valve, great, compared to the V11, and release the air. Now after realizing that the roll bar doesn't work well as a kickstand on my yoga mat, I will remove the screws which hold the suspension pistons in place. And on this side I have a V11 piston which was a quick fix to both of my broken V13 pistons. Those pistons broke because of my heavy use and too high pressure. Max pressure here is 220 psi, I was using it up to 300 psi. This is how the damper looks like and now we'll do the same on the other side. Here you can see how the V13 suspension compares to the V11 one. It's just slightly bigger and the piston extends further. You can see that the air was leaking through the top part, uh, through this one not as much as through the other piston that broke, but those pistons are different and this air shock is what is inside the V13. I gotta say to you guys, I still prefer to have a hydraulic suspension with a coil this is just less maintenance than air suspension, even though air has its upsides as well. Now we will remove the pedals. There was a grub screw on the bottom, which I've lost. And there's two small hex screws with a plastic spacer on each side, which hold the rod in place. There is some friction that you need to overcome in order to remove the rod. There's also those rubber pieces inside which want to make sure that the pedals stay upwards when folded. The pedals are big and spacious but slippery when wet. The studs are milled in and there's not a lot of them. They should be screw in like MTB pedals. They're also not angle adjustable. You can adjust the height of the pedals though by moving this pedal bracket. In order to do the suspension delete, I need to get this bracket out. And sadly, this option is not available now when you purchase a V13. You can also see that this pedal bracket has holes, presumably for angle adjustment of pedals, which never happened. So I guess they changed their mind. This is the new bracket, which I will put in place so I can ride the V13 in a lower pedal setting without suspension. Now it is time to divorce the motor and suspension assembly from the main EUC. I guess it, if it's marrying the motor into the wheel, then this is divorcing the motor? Anyways, this perspective is really funny and I needed a fair amount of power because there was quite a bit of friction on the suspension. Uh, probably I could adjust it with the screw I mentioned earlier. I also weighed the motor with the suspension assembly and mudguard and it's 20 kilograms. It's super heavy. Now a heavier motor means more stability, but also less efficiency and more difficult acceleration. Now I'll remove a further amount of small hex screws, which hold the battery unit to the exoshell of the V13. The battery cover is really sturdy with reinforced corners and it's also waterproof, IP67. The batteries are also dunked in silicone or I don't know, epoxy, which is great for waterproofing. However, a bit more difficult and challenging for repair and replacement. Max charge rate on this battery unit is seven amps, so around one and a half hours for a full charge on the V13. Not too bad, but could be faster. The label doesn't tell us which batteries are inside, but presumably it's Sanyo GA 18650s. Only one of those battery packs weighs around 10 kilograms. So you can tell now where the weight on the V13 is coming from. So now I can see clearly how the exoskeleton sort of of the V11 looks like, I mean V13. 
Uh, here we have the adjustment knob for the suspension, so you can adjust the tolerances. And you have those bits and pieces, which are sort of like the thing that holds the batteries together. So it's not just the batteries, there's something actually underneath the batteries, which is really cool, makes them more sturdy. You can see there's a lot of dirt building up on the batteries here. Shouldn't need be a problem because they're dipped or dunked in sort of uh, silicone or other stuff. But you can see that <clears throat> actually it's like everything is very exposed. Like here are the wires are exposed. I don't think those are waterproof uh, ventilators uh, inside or maybe they are, I don't know. But they're dry. So unless you like put the wheel the other way around opposite or it falls into a puddle, it should be fine. Uh, here you have a bit more spray of dirt and gunk. And here in the back you have all the light and you can see that this stuff, luckily it's dunked in some sort of hot glue, but it's also already covered in, in mud. And yeah, it's just a, an area which is open. So it's, it's like this and here you can see the, the light in the front, cables, and yeah, that's what it looks like. And then it was time to put it all back together. Now I am a fan of the smart BMS, of all of the safety features, of the waterproof batteries, of a IP rating. However, there is also some shortcomings that I've shown in video. Now, is it worth the 4,600 euro price tag? Well, wait for the main review to see about that. But if you're still here, leave a like on the video, subscribe to see more content like this, and I'll see you in the next video. See you soon.